In this video, we're going to continue talking about landscapes, but now we're going to talk about landscape materials, where you can combine multiple textures to make a material that you can then have different types of materials or textures simultaneously working on your landscape here. To begin, I've actually pulled in three different textures that I would like to use as far as my landscape is concerned. I'd like to be able to work with kind of a rock, grassy, and then snow type of textures. To begin, I'm going to go ahead and right click in my content area and we're going to make a material. We're going to call it M underscore landscape. I'm going to go ahead and double click. And one of the first things that I'm going to do here is make some room. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in all three of these textures here that I want to work with. So just clicking, dragging, and dropping into your material area will work fine. Now, one of the first things that we're going to have to create is what is called a landscape layer blend. This is an array type of material node that will allow you to combine all three of these textures into this base color output. We will then be able to actually assign it to the landscape and then we'll be able to actually add different weights as far as the three textures are concerned. So if you go to your categories and start looking at landscape, the one that you want to start out with is layer blend. So I'm going to click drag and drop layer blend and by default there's not a lot to it here. For the layer blend what you're going to need to do is to come over under the details panel and if you notice right now as far as the layers are concerned we have no array elements here. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate three array elements and what those three array elements are going to do is they're going to appear here in the node. So to demonstrate I'm going to go ahead and add an array element. Now a friendly reminder by default arrays start counting at zero. I'm going to go ahead and expand out so that I can give it a name. If you notice over in the blend node here, right now I have layer none. So maybe I change this to rock. Another thing to point out is the blend types here. Right now, I want this to be the main or top layer here, so I'm going to change this over to alpha blend. So let's go ahead here, let's make two more array elements. So I'm going to make, click to add my first. I'm going to change this, I'll call this grass. And again, notice how in the node, my names are changing for the layers. And then I'll add one more and let's call this snow. Now because I wanted the rock to be the main top layer, I've changed the alpha blend there. Weight blend is fine for the subsequent. In the grand scheme of things, you can technically have as many layers that you would like on a layer blend. However, just be careful as far as the size of the material and also too as far as load times. So once I have this set up here, I can now come in using the RGB connector for each of the textures, connect them to their corresponding layers. I can then, if, you, if I like, I can take the layer blend and put it into the base color. The last node that we're going to need to add just from a basic landscape material standpoint is we are going to have to add in what is called uh, a landscape coords, which is actually, since I still have my palette set up where I was looking up landscapes, you can see it's right beneath layer blend. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the landscape layer coords. Not as really impressive here, but what this does is this helps to control the UV mapping of the landscape materials here. You can see over under the details panel, one thing that you might be interested in is the actual mapping scale. Where maybe I take this up to say a 3.0 to start out with. That's a size that you might have to play around with. But because this controls the UV measurements as far as a texture is concerned, we are going to use the single landscape coords 
and we're going to put it into the UV marker for each of the textures to help control them whenever they're being mapped on the landscape. Once you've done this, you've now prepared a very basic landscape material here. You can go ahead at this point, you can say apply, and you can say save. I can now X out of my material editor, and I'm going to come back under my modes and go back into select and select my landscape here. When you select the landscape and then you go to the details panel, you'll see a section here called landscape material. We can now go ahead and click on the drop down menu and there's that M landscape that I generated. And then I'll go ahead, use my arrow to assign it. If your landscape pops up black, don't panic. That's normal. We need to set up one more thing before we can actually begin working with the landscape here. Let's go ahead, now that we've assigned our material, let's go back into the landscape editor here. And let's go take a look over under the paint tab. Notice down at the bottom here, you do have target layers and it's actually recognizing by having the material assigned to it, it is recognizing your three different layers here, rock, grass, and snow. However, what it doesn't have is the layer info here. So if I go ahead and say weight blended normal, it's going to ask me to generate a new landscape layer info object. What Unreal will try to do is it will try to make a landscape demo shared assets folder, which is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and let it just name it how it would like to. So I'll go ahead and say OK. So there you can see it's generating that. So now we just have to do that two more times here for the grass and the snow. And what you should now see is the default rock layer is currently active. If I wanted to change things up a little bit, I could come and click on grass, I can change as far as the brush size goes, and it may take Unreal a little bit here, but if you start clicking and dragging, you see how I'm able to actually add and blend in that new grass layer there. I could also take snow, put a little bit of snow up on the top here. And you can see now how you can begin working with multiple materials on a single landscape to get that realistic looking effect going on. Another question that often comes up though is as you can see in my example of Unreal while I'm working here, you can see these lines of the dividers of the different quadrants here. If you just come up and build your lighting, it may take a minute as far as the new elements, especially depending on how much you have done. But it will, once you go through the lighting building process, which you can see is happening down at the bottom here, it will remove the lines and you won't see them in the published product. And there we go. You can now see that my lines have disappeared. However, every time that you do add in additional materials, it is going to have to have the lighting rebuilt. And that's how you work with, and you can start out with working with materials in landscapes.